let's do the demo first, Kushal. Uh, I'd like to do that as well. Uh, sure. Uh, let me share my screen then. Oh, hi, Kushal. I hadn't seen you on my phone. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Pedro. Uh, yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, it, it appears exact same. Uh, so we have the header, the description, related issues, and the uh, discussion area. Only the sidebar is uh, not present here. So for sidebar, what we planned to do was to create it as a shared component and uh, reuse it from there so that it is available in case we want to refactor sidebar implementations for both issues and MRs. So that is why sidebar is missing here because it will not be part of the same code uh, of the app as the Epix itself. And uh, the changes for this app are currently under this branch, uh, which is uh, 7750 Epic app refactor. I'll open uh, MR for this because the shell part is pretty much done for this one. Uh, I'll create a shell for the sidebar on this one. And in case anyone wants to test it, once uh, this code is in the master, then it is currently uh, behind a cookie flag. So there's a flag called, uh, yeah, load new epic app. So I'll, I'll leave the details within the MR once I open it. So if you do these changes, uh, like uh, setting this flag to true, then it will load up uh, the newer app. So if I just reset it, like setting it to false, and then reload the page, then it would uh, load up the older app with the sidebar. So as you can see, nothing changed uh, as far as the center content is concerned. Only the sidebar showed up because it is now coming in from the, the older app. And uh, I can already see how simpler it would be to test this newer app because uh, while we have reused all the smaller portions, so the description field, the related issues are all the reusable apps which are part of the core code base itself. But the header area, the sidebar, once it is implemented, will entirely be uh, created from scratch, except for the smaller portions within those components. And it would be much easier for us to test it. And yeah, it, it is only going to make my life uh, easier to test and debug it. So yeah. So that is all for the demo. Uh, obviously, visually, there isn't much uh, difference from the older one. So once it is ready, I'll still anyway have it assigned to Pedro to look for anything that I might have missed out in the newer implementation. So fix it earlier. That's great, Kushal. You said this is in a branch or in master? I thought I heard both. Uh, no, it is currently in the branch. What I'll do is that I'll open the MR. So I was uh, like wrapping up uh, the portion that we planned for this release. I'll open the MR. So I had this discussion with Andre as well. So like right now, uh, uh, not all the new features that we want to test only in small portions of users are behind cookie flags. We have a proper backend uh, process to do that. Like if we want to roll out a certain feature to certain percent of users into the gitlab.com, then uh, there is a way to do that. But for my convenience, because since I wanted both the older and newer app available to me at all the times to compare both of them side by side, I used a cookie flag mechanism to toggle between both the apps. But there is another way to do that as well. So I had this discussion last week with Andre in my one-on-one. -on -one. So I'll explore what are the options that we have. Because in case, once we have this app ready and uh, be part of master, uh, what we, we may want to do is to roll it out for a certain number of users. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it is not a visual difference. So I don't see why we would want to do that. Right. That would help us only if we are performing some kind of UX research where we want to see mm -hmm. how users would respond to a newer implementation, a newer design of a certain area. It is just a refactor of an existing exactly. design. So this is still something that is an open discussion for me. Okay. But yeah, in, in any case, what I'll do is I'll make sure that the code changes are still in the master. And that is where that flag thing comes into the picture. Because if we if it is behind a cookie flag, then maintainer might not be confident about it. Like whether we want to merge it or not. Because if someone enables the cookie flag, then they would end up seeing an incomplete app in the, into the production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, which is why we would hold off in case we want to merge it to the master. But okay. uh, yeah, okay. yeah that we, is we just to give you the context. That, that's great. Um, yeah, if, any, if anybody complains about that, Kushal, feel free to pick me and um, I can also take part in the conversation. I, I don't. I'm not going to override anybody's decision, but um, I, I, I want I would want to understand why, and because I think this is a great mechanism. This is like great great work that you've done. It's super flexible, and if this is a production, like you said, that anybody can test it. Um, yeah. To me, it's totally safe because you can't expect somebody to hack your 
console, right? Um, that's sort of like not fair game, like because then there's like a bazillion things you can do already in the console, and yes. it's not, and it's just, you're not like exposing any security thing either, right? It's just it's functionality. So um, even though like people who use GitLab totally know how to use the console, <laughs> um, but it's still not it's not it's not something that I think is is a valid argument to protect against. And then your other comment regarding feature flag versus like cookie flag, it, it's called the feature flag, for example, it's a feature, right? So, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're, we're not uh, flagging or toggling a feature. And I think you're totally right that the purpose of that, to my understanding, again, is totally if uh, more so, if not totally just for testing new features and not testing stability. And then yes. um, obviously it can use be, to be tested for stability, but I don't know if that's the intention um, or well, well I mean features you also have stability from like a bug regression perspective and from like a, you know if anything broke so so it, it, it's like stability has more but like from I think like the, the correct term would be like from a regression uh, purely like no change in technical update perspective um, I don't see any benefit inherent benefit to roll this out and change it because if we're doing our QA properly, then we should need it, right? Yep. And um, so we, we should be confident in that and not sort of like like mix concerns because if we do this, then we will start relying on this and then then the QA person, you know, Ramya will, will trust this, not, 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 you know, consciously, but sort of like the process will break down because then she will never have feedback that something broke. Right, yeah. so you have to force I've, her to to have to shift. Good. I mean, it's not only her job, of course. She, at at the lever, everybody's job is QA, but but you know what I mean, right? Like we 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 want to make sure our QA process is still good. That we're still doing QA, we're still doing feature assurance. Well, in this case, we're just doing QA because there's no feature assurance. It's the same feature, right? So so I would yep. say that that QA should be um, the responsible, not person, but like process to make sure that uh, a refactor is working and not like a, a feature flag. But the cookie thing is is great to do it in steps, right? So that's yep. how I see it. It's great, uh, great to do it in steps. You know, thank, thanks for sharing that. So, you know, that's my opinion. You didn't ask for it. Um, <laughs> if you're gonna uh, have an MR, and then that's that's probably what I would say if, if somebody needs to know. So yes. the other topic, unless somebody added anything else to the agenda, looks like nobody is the uh, promote issue to Epic. So um, what should we talk about first? Let, let's talk about the easier thing or less controversial thing, which is uh, migrating the notes over or, or the system notes. And then I think, Yarka, you put a comment saying that you pretty well much want to migrate everything all in this issue. Is that still the current plan? Is everything feasible? Yeah, copying everything is no, is not a problem. The bigger problem is handling the text, uh, meaning we have to move uploads that uh, that are in description or in notes, and we also need to change extracting references because all references are in the issue, either in description or in notes, have to be uh, re uh, reparsed basically extract it again. And we don't have it ready for groups because when we move issue from one project to another, mm, it's right, still right, right. a project for which we have Banzai ready for, but not for groups. So that's the thing that I found basically yesterday evening. Right, right. And without that, it would be quite simple, but with this, some additional change. Those changes might not be difficult, but it will be a bit difficult to find what exactly I need to Right, change. right. So un unknown, known unknowns, I think. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so not too bad. So we're past unknown unknowns, right? So we were unknown unknowns until it sounds like last night you did some work, so now we're known unknowns. Um, so, yeah. sorry, I missed what you said. You, you, did you say images or references or, or both? Both. Both uploads and references. Okay. Because so, we do have uploads in projects, and we we have to move uh, the upload from that project to group. Right. So, so you mean like and the, we use the, another upload okay. for group? So it might. I'm not saying really difficult, but additional yeah. changes required. Well, I mean, it seems like a pretty sizable. Yeah, I'm thinking what we can do there. So, 
So you mean there's, let's focus on upload first. So you mean, when you say upload, it means images, any binary file, you can upload an MP3, I think. You can yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. from implementation perspective if it's image okay. or not. And then, and then you're saying both in the description and you can upload no, binary stuff in the image and in the comments and then when we... Yeah, but it should be the same method, so... Oh, it should be the same, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but, same um, the uploads are uh, scoped to the project. Yeah. Uh, so, so they like if I'm not, uh, for example, if it's a private project, and there is an upload in that private project, and I'm an anonymous user, I cannot see that upload. Is that it? I, I don't think it's a permissions. Up, That's uh, it. Yeah. So uh, is everybody choppy, or is it just me, or am I? No, I, I lost the argument. Yeah, yeah, Pedro, I don't think we're talking about permissions. In this particular case, we're saying that when we promote an issue, it's an epic. I mean, the next talk topic is permissions. Um, but, but for this particular case, we're saying, like, when you promote an issue to an epic, the issue lives at the project level. The, the epic lives at the group level. And I think what Yarka is saying, when we upload stuff, binary stuff, content to an issue, it's in the background in the background it's it's at the project level so now we're we're copying over stuff to the epic and so naturally the stuff has to be moved to the group level um which yeah exactly we already do that for when we move uh, move if you issue to another project we just uh, move files of copy files from one project to another but now we also need to do it from project to group right right and then there's no um Yarka, sorry, I cut, uh, I just cut out there for 10 seconds. Um, so there's no, there's like, we, we don't want to do anything where uh, we, we reference it. So bad word, because that's what you talk about next. But like, if the object is already in the, in the project, we can refer to that, to that object directly. No, we should, we should, we should copy it. We do it for, for when, when you move issue from one project to another, we also copy files that are uh, in that issue to another project. So I will basically um, change this functionality to work also for groups. Can, can you talk briefly why that's the preferred strategy? Yeah, that, that was that's my question as well. <laughs> because that's how the references and the uploads work now, that we also basically reference from when you have issue in a project, and you have uploader, it's always reference to that project. Okay, okay but like, like I'm, I'm not, you know, we're not going to change your decision, but it is more curious, more, more curious. So, so my understanding is that all, all these images, for example, are scoped to a project namespace, and then they're not exposed to the user, like the, like the URL or anything, or like that's not a, a requirement, right? It doesn't matter what the URL is. Um, they can copy or whatever, but the... Um, it's in the background stored somewhere. It's one object. And then now we want to display or render that same image in a different location. So why, why, why is it a, you know, technically a, a better thing to make a copy of it and not just point to it? It seems like it's a save of, it's saving space. It's already there anyways in the, you know, storage. Why does it matter that um, it has to have its own copy? Well, I think it makes sense to have uh, to have an correct project, otherwise it could get, get messy. I didn't make the decision. I don't know what was behind that. Right. Maybe when the project is deleted, the file is also deleted? No, it's not because we, we keep the old issue. E even if you keep the old issue, right? They're, they're just references to, to images. Like, I'm not going to keep pushing you, Yarko. Maybe we can just take this off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this it, is it was curiosity yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah I matter. think it's because uh, we have to have some order. Uh, otherwise, it, it would get messy. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not convinced it's messy, but, uh, you know, I'm also not an engineer. So, so, so that's what, but, um, uh, I don't, uh, yeah, that's not... The that's decision not, was made a couple of years ago, probably, and I was not there, so... No, no, and, and yeah, no, and so we can, we can challenge that right now, right? It's like, we can, we can, and, and if it's relevant, and, and, like, if we can make a decision, then it, it makes your life easier, we, let's do it. Um, but let's, let's go with your, your suggestion. I'll just start a conversation in Slack, I'll pull in. Sean and, and you know other people whoever wants to chime in can chime in and then um, 
but let's let's not block you, Yarka. Let's proceed with mm -hmm. your current design, um, and then and then we'll go from there. And then the other thing I wanted to ask is when you say reference, what do you mean by reference? Like like issue references? And yeah, exactly. Also. Issue reference, merge request reference, and things okay. like that. Okay, and then that has to be all parsed in Epic group land because it could be different, and and so there's like you have to run the code again or whatever. To do that. Yeah, maybe. we have to basically re extract that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so that that's the complexity there on the back end. Great. Um, okay. So so it sounds like everything is still under control, um, but you, you you found some additional things. So that that's great. And then um, if there's no other topic on the back end, on the front end, um, we have the so this is related to permissions, but I don't want to. Uh, Add any logic to check permissions. Um, so, so if you look at the thread, um, we had a lot of discussions about that. But what I want to do is, if you have an issue and you, uh, if you can access the issue, then you should be able to promote the issue to an epic. And uh, Yarka, is this correct? I always get this backwards. If you have access to a project, do you have access to the group automatically? you too right um so you can have a you can have a private group but not a public project right because it, it can't go backwards it has to go in one direction i believe that is that yeah great? you can have public group uh, inside the group you can have private project but right right but you. exactly exactly so not yeah. the opposite so that yes. means my, my point is being is that if you can see an issue so, um, so there is one edge case I didn't think about, which is uh, confidential issues. Then you shouldn't be able to see. Okay, so there's there's more weird edge cases, but we'll we'll, we'll document them one by one, or, or we can leave them. But but in the general case, I think like ninety five percent of the case, if you can see an issue, then you can see any epic in the parent group permissions wise. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. right. And so if that's the case. I, I want to allow you to always be allowed to promote the issue to an epic, but you just have to be careful. It's your responsibility to be mm -hmm. careful. And then we want to show additional UI to, to help the user be careful. And then so what I'm proposing here is that, uh, especially for the first iteration, we don't check whether it's private or public. We just always tell them, anytime you promote, be careful, right? And then so so there's no logic to check the, the uh, Permissions because you know everything is inherent, and if that's the case, um, what I'm I, I think I'm leaning toward design-wise is what uh, uh, Annabelle has, um, and Annabelle responded. But like if you look at Annabelle's design from adding the banner from one day ago, I, I, I like that design, and so the latest discussion is just when to add that banner or how, um, and then let's see what Annabelle says. She said. I don't love the idea of highlighting a whole row in a quick action yellow all the time either. Let me think about it. But, okay. Um, right. So, so Kushal, my, 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 my answer to your comment about being it like more, more, a lot of work, which I think it would be, I think what the, the original design is the banner appears whenever the words promote appear or with the slash command, obviously. Yeah, so a uh, quick update. So uh, when I left my comment uh, regarding, uh, I just wanted to evaluate whether it would be efficient enough to monitor the comment changes and then show up or hide the banner. So I debugged it and apparently it is easier to do that uh, by basically monitoring what are the slash commands which are present within the comment body and then uh, show the banner accordingly. Now, Annabelle has left a comment uh, regarding how we want to show the banner. So right now, if user clicks on the preview tab, we already show what are the commands present within the comment body and right. what those commands do. So that is more of a UX decision whether we want to show that banner as a part of preview tab or if we want to show that danger banner like uh, Annabelle mentioned because slash promote is much more uh, destructive action possibly. Uh, like it would uh, end up uh, doing a lot of modifications behind the scenes. So whether we want to stay consistent regarding how we want to show those uh, warnings, whether in the preview tab or whether we want to show it as a banner. But if we do want to show it as a banner in real time, like when the user is updating the comment field, then uh, it is again easier to do as well. Yeah. 
Right, right. I, I would say we should do both to be consistent. Well, the preview tab we should probably do. And uh, do we get that for free? I, I don't even know. Is that inheriting the... No, I don't think we get that for free because like the milestone one looks different. Um, but anyways, um, to me, that's like almost independent because that's nice to have in the preview, but it doesn't solve the UX problem of like we want to warn the user, right? So, um, so, so I would, I would push Annabelle and Kushal yourself to figure out whatever is easiest um, to solve that particular problem. And then the preview tab thing, I, I, I mean, that to me, that's just a poor design currently. And like, we should have an issue to address it anyways, right? Like, like if you don't click the preview tab, you don't even see that message. And so that's- Yeah, exactly. 80% 80 of the time, I don't uh, click preview tab as well, unless I have like pasted a giant comment with a lot right. of comments to make sure like everything looks fine or not. Exactly. There's like three I or think four issues with the at all and at people, like at all, and then there's like a warning somewhere, and then I forget where that appears, but it, it's related to a preview tab. Sorry, go ahead, Pedro. Yeah, I was going to say it related to what you were just saying with the, the all and the here and the everyone. Uh, that, that was that issue where I suggested maybe we used... Um, a two-step process where people had to confirm that they want to do a certain action. And I think in this case, if there is a possibility of uh, unintentionally disclosing uh, private information, confidential information, I think we should have, like, it doesn't need to be on this issue. This is like something for the future because not a lot of people use epics. Maybe it's just us and a few uh, customers. <laughs> and maybe there's not a huge risk of right now of disclosing confidential information, but maybe in the future we can have another iteration where we show a confirmation uh, dialogue, like, are you sure you want to promote? Because like this issue is confidential and the group is public. So shit might happen essentially. Um, right. But th that's another thing. Uh, I have to check the design that you're talking about, but even if it's just a small note or even highlighting, sorry, someone. Sorry, it was an ambulance. Uh, so what I was saying is that even if it's just highlighting the text, uh, the promote epic and showing that it uh, might lead to that, I right. think it's enough as a first iteration. Okay, that sounds good, Pedro. And no, and I, I love, I like your suggestion because it would apply not just to this. We can use it for like the the all thing, um, and then yeah, and we can use it for even the button action, right? So this would be for quick action. But if right. there is the regular button click action somewhere in the UI, we can also reuse that in the future. Right, right. Uh, and the same for assigning a lot of people, right? If you, yep. for some reason, your mouse goes crazy and you click like 10 people or 12 people right. at the same time in the drop, drop down of the assignees, we should yep. have a safe mechanism to okay. make sure that you're not doing an error or doing something wrong. Yeah, I, I think a good rule would be like anything that's not immediately undoable. So promoting is like, you can, exactly. undo it. you can undo it, but it'll take like 10 steps. You have to delete the, well, it's actually not that bad for, for promote. You have to delete the, the epic. Well, you know, I guess I, it, I, I think, I think it's, it's three, that. three, it's like three or four kinds of risks. So right. one of them is, over communication like spamming right. another right. one is financial risk which is like being billed for something that you weren't sure you're going to be billed yeah. right. the right. other right. is pri private conf information right. like right. something right. in your personal profile and you didn't know that like That's this right. information would be public and uh, there was another one that i i'm not <laughs> forgetting <laughs> but something like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah no, need no, to no. have a two-step button yeah, like, because I'm thinking, like, if, like, related issue quick action, which a community member is working on, right? That is, like, you, you wouldn't add more friction there because you could immediately just undo that action really quickly. So Exactly, exactly. But uh, promoting Epic, you could delete that. You could close the Epic, but you can't even delete it. And then if you have permissions to, to promote the issue, you don't have necessary permissions to delete the Epic. And then exactly like you said, you have to go into the Epic, you have to delete all the content um, that you don't want to be shown. And then once we have description uh, history parsing or, or tracking, then you can't delete that either. So um, that, that's coming. So, so all these uh, um, things that you write incorrectly in the description or that it's embarrassing because you made a typo, <laughs> those will be logged forever. 
um, sometime in 2019. So uh, that, that's that's a good point. So okay. So why don't yeah why don't we let Annabelle uh, continue with this? Um, it looks like at least Yarka is is chugging along. There's still more work anyways. So um, hopefully this won't be delayed. We're at we're at the 16th now. So it seems that we have we're not even halfway yet. But you know we'll we'll keep monitoring this. Um, I think this is a great issue. A anything big else, Yarka? I know I know Kushal is pretty much in the clear for. I just wanted to add that we were talking about promoting issue to Epic that that might be permission problem, which is not a real problem. But we do have the same when moving issue from, for instance, private project to public. So maybe we should keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah, we should log in the show. I'll, I'll, I'll create an issue. Well, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll wait till the design settles. Um, no, no. Yeah, 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 sure, but just not to forget that. Yeah, no, no, I, I should never do that. That's a that's an anti-pattern I feel that don't wait. Just do commit and update. So I will yeah. I will create an issue, but I can wait because I have a crap load of stuff to do. So that I can forgive myself. Um, well, no, I shouldn't forgive myself. I'll just okay. So you're just gonna, gonna watch me create an issue. Um, so any, anything else um, we need to talk about? I'm gonna create the issue now. Uh, Anything else, Yarka? On is Yarka frozen? Uh, uh, nothing from my side. No, okay, so let me let me check quickly. Uh, portfolio management stuff. Is this the big one? Like this is the big new feature for eleven five, right? Like we have a bunch of smaller things. Yeah, I think but so. But they're not new. Uh, yeah, they're not new. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, eleven five. They're not new features. They're all improvements to existing things. Notifications is a big one, I guess, um, for closing ethics. OK, great. Um, OK, I'll create that issue right now, so I won't delay. All right, thank you, Erica. Thank you, Kushal. Thank you, Pedro. Talk to you folks next week. Bye.